Imagine you decided to spend your day off with nature, so you're leaving your town or village or city where you normally stay, you're driving on an empty road, and at some point you have to slam on the brakes because you can see an animal crossing the, the road. And my question to you is, what animal is this? What animal can you see? And now scenario number two, you keep driving, eventually find this quiet spot, it's just you and the nature, you park the car, you get outside, lay down on the grass, you're looking up, uh, at the trees that are giving you nice shade on this sunny day and my question to you is what are the trees you're looking at and both of these examples are examples of our cultural influence so uh, i'm actually really interested in what kind of trees and what kind of animal you saw so feel free to post in the comments i'd love to to know how uh, diverse my audience is but uh, the reason i gave you these scenarios is to just show you that our cultural background has a huge influence obviously uh, on how we see things how we imagine things what do we expect certain things to be or what are uh, are our assumptions about certain things so what is our expectation when i say there is an animal crossing the road was it what is our expectation when i say there are trees or there is a forest what can you imagine and as you uh, probably guess as you can imagine uh, this kind of a cultural uh, load and cu cultural background uh, can have a huge impact on how we analyze our data. Don't forget to check out my ebook entitled Scholar's Guide to AI Assisted Thematic Analysis, which is a useful resource for thematic analysis, whether you do plan to use AI or not. It contains plenty of useful advice, step by step instructions for thematic analysis, and a list of prompts that you can copy and paste into ChatGPT. Of course, the topic of such cultural differences and as a result, the cultural the beliefs about certain things and expectations is a huge one. It's probably outside the scope of this video, but just to give you a few examples of how these views may differ, just imagine all these different perceptions of, for example, gender roles or education or uh, female and male uh, role models and expectations as to and to, as to their uh, their roles and uh, what is a snack or what is breakfast and what is dinner what is uh, what does a house look like what does a city look like so all these different things uh, can differ completely for people from uh, different cultures uh, in fact at the moment there is a there is a big debate and there is a bit of an issue regarding ai for example an image generation uh, because uh, the way this happens is at some point, it's, uh, to different extents, uh, when we're training these models, there are people involved in the training. So there are data label labelers who basically uh, train these models. They have to label uh, s a certain amounts of data and let uh, the AI, the so-called AI, know basically what uh, they can see. Uh, and there is a huge debate and a bit of an issue, like I said, because depending on the, the background of these data labelers, uh, they decide about different things, basically, when they see them. So apart from these immediate uh, connotations, uh, when it comes to, for example, the word animal, the word tree, uh, there are also all these uh, uh, sets of beliefs or sets of expectations about certain a notion certain concepts so even if you think about the notion uh, the concept of a forest or trees abundance of trees then again it depends on uh, what culture you're from and depending on that you'll be possibly thinking or feeling different things so you may perceive a forest or abundance of trees as a source of timber and think about economy and money you can think about something sacred if you're from a different culture you can think about something that's spiritual you can think about health and things like that so again it will be it, there's a whole load and whole uh, bunch of different beliefs that together make up how you feel about a certain concept so so how does that translate to data analysis where of course uh, your role as a research is at least to some extent at some point to decide about certain things and to label them essentially as i often say you're uh, tagging the data when you're coding it so you're assigning uh, the data certain labels so the first answer and the, the, the first set of things that can be done about this would not be much different from any other uh, discussion of validity of the findings validity of your of your study in general because uh, validity is uh, essentially about decreasing or minimizing bias. You can watch my video about validity and qualitative research. Essentially, valid increasing validity means decreasing 
the chance of bias of different types of bias including researcher bias so uh, there are different methods for that like i said i do review all of them in that video uh, but here as well they will be all relevant and applicable so uh, if you think about member check-in so uh, double checking or co confirming the meaning with uh, the, the participants or peer debriefing where you can in our situation in our case when you talk about culture you can kind of bounce your ideas off each other and make sure that maybe your expectations or your cultural uh, background you know did not decide about uh, certain things in the analysis uh, there is whole idea of transparency and audit trail so again uh, being just very transparent about everything including your own expectations then reflexivity or reflectivity where you're reflecting on your role your background you're talking about your expectations which helps to like control this influence and helps to decide for example uh, at which point my my cultural background my expectations play the role so so all these things will still be relevant as in any other uh, study then you have uh, cultural uh, training or uh, cultural sensitivity uh, intercultural awareness and things like that where basically it's advisable to be sensitive to all these uh, things the influence of culture and as you can imagine uh, the more uh, culturally diverse topics or contexts you're exploring or the more uh, of an outsider you are to the culture that you're exploring or the culture of the participants you're researching the more advisable it would of course be for you to have understanding of such of such topics before we continue just a quick reminder that if you feel lost if you feel like you need some support with your study at any stage either planning or implementation feel free to look at the resources on my website and also look through all the different services that i offer including data analysis services or a whole bunch of different zoom tutorials where we can look at your study we can plan it we can look at your research proposal your analysis your codes or anything anything else now let's get back to the video but what i really wanted to focus on in this video is the process of uh, of data analysis itself uh, so rather than all these uh, considerations that take place in the background or something you have to kind of uh, prepare for in advance i just want to talk data analysis so is there anything we can do and what is that impact because if you think about the the examples i gave you uh, of course you know there is a huge difference between uh, these different concepts and how a uh, certain researcher may what they may decide about what they're reading so the answer is actually much simpler probably than what you may expect and the answer is that if you follow uh, if you're rigorous basically about how you analyze the data and how you code it specifically then you are already minimizing that impact and now if you follow uh, if you watch some of my videos uh, i'll link to some additional videos if you want to still watch them you'll know that uh, when i explain the process of coding and what actually happens at that stage i often explain that we're essentially uh, just describing and tagging that data so we're not deciding about what we're reading and this is a common problem and many of my students struggle with that because they want to they inevitably feel like they have to start interpreting things and that's a bi uh, big mistake if they do it at the very early stages of coding so so a common assumption and a, and a misconception is that as you're reading the transcripts you're already thinking about your research questions and trying to uh, to uh, tag and assign these uh, basically these rather abstract and, and general concepts to what you're reading and these concepts often in involve your interpretation and uh, some of you think that that's exactly what needs to happen but it's uh, exactly the opposite so you don't want to be interpreting you don't want to be uh, overthinking uh, these concepts as you're reading your your transcripts all you need to do when coding is just to uh, to tag it with uh, essentially short summaries and descriptions of what you are reading and these codes ideally again the approach that i usually promote they should be uh, descriptive they should be descriptive so literally describing what's being said in a in a certain passage uh, therefore if i'm reading about somebody taking walks in forest somebody talks about uh, being outside and taking long walks in the forest i uh, the codes that i'll be creating will be something along the lines of walking in the forest or taking walks in the forest these codes will not be about uh, living close to the nature being spiritual or anything like that unless uh, it is what this person actually said to me so as you can see i'm not deciding about what this is i'm not interpreting which means that my background and how i see 
uh, the situation, how uh, what I believe about being close or being among the trees does not really make uh, such a big difference. Of course, there will always be some influence. There is always subjectivity. There is no two ways around it. You, there's, there's always subjectivity in qualitative research, but you can uh, minimize that influence and that bias as much as possible by being so descriptive. So just trying to be as objective as possible. In the later stages of the analysis, of course, when you're thinking about the themes, for example, so you're taking all these codes now, you're looking at all the codes that you have. Again, if you're not sure about the process, feel free to watch my uh, my video in which I explain, I take you through all these stages of coding and how to develop themes. But essentially, at some point, you're looking at the codes, which I like to compare to a table of contents. They are now showing you all your data. You're looking at these codes and you're trying to decide about things. So at that point, uh, to some extent, uh, your your background, your beliefs start to, to uh, come into play a little bit more than at these initial, initial stages. Although, again, I often say that developing themes is still not co uh, contrary to a, a popular belief, not something where you're overly interpretive. You're still trying to kind of just reduce the volume of the data and show what the data tells us, not what I think about this data. So, so really, the only point where you're really expected to reflect and interpret is, of course, the discussion uh, section. The discussion section where you're discussing what you just showed in the findings, uh, which means that that's where uh, probably this influence is the biggest. So the influence of how you see things. And there is nothing really we can, or in my opinion, we should do about this influence or that cultural background at this stage when we're discussing things. Because after all, we, we are all humans and that's our value that we bring into the, uh, the study, uh, all these beliefs and how we see things. So I believe the only thing at that stage is that uh, that we should do is at some point, as I said earlier, reflect, really reflect on how we see things, on uh, reflect on perhaps our own cultural uh, background, especially, again, especially if we're exploring things that are uh, very, very context specific. So in short, uh, this video turned out to be pretty long, but I hope you enjoyed it. And in short, uh, in terms of actual procedures and how we minimize that impact, when uh, coding and analyzing the data, it would really all come down to being very descriptive and very rigorous in your coding. And at that point, you should not worry too much about this possible impact of the culture. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. Please like the video if you did. Please comment underneath. Let me know about that animal and that tree that you saw when I asked you to imagine things. And remember, I offer uh, a whole bunch of services through my website. If you're lost, if you feel that you need support, have a look at the services that I offer. Uh, there's a lot of services, including Zoom uh, tutorials where we can look at your data, look at your study, we can plan it, we can look at your data analysis and all sorts of things. So do explore uh, that website.